last week. Wanted to just make sure I had something juicy for the uh, return stream on Monday here. Uh, but this is uh, Valakit Titan with Archdruid's Charm. <coughs> Archdruid's Charm has been... Sorry, I, I, like, I just have like some matcha that I like. I just like take a little swig, a little bit too much powder in the bottom of the glass. Um, Archdruid's Charm has been a very, very good card for us uh, in a variety of brews so far. Um, sorry, why am I... It was very good in the Pioneer Devotion deck. Why am I blanking on the the other good modern deck we ha we've had with it? I guess. I, oh right, we um we played it in Timeless Lotus, right? We played it in Timeless Lotus last week. The card was like All Star here. Uh, we trophied with the the card in the deck. You know, we we maybe have. I don't know if we were the first people to trophy with Archdruid's Charm in Modern, but we're definitely one of the first. Um, and so really for this card to be good, you want it to be both a very good ramp spell. And you want it to also be a payoff to when you have a lot of mana. And, and it also just gets to incidentally be like a, a flexible removal spell too. Where in this deck, you can grab uh, either Castle Garenbrig or Sunken Citadel to kind of like get a double land to play Primeval Titan pretty consistently on turn 4. Or if you already have a turn 4 Primeval Titan, you can just put Primeval Titan into your hand. You can also grab Dryad, you can grab Valakit. You have a lot, a lot of good modes on the... Uh, the search mode here. Uh, also, being able to like main deck Exile Blood Moon is pretty nice. But you, a lot of times you're gonna have to do this on the play, hold up three mana, and Exile Blood Moon. That that is pretty nice and uh, a nice little dynamic uh, part of this deck's game plan. But Charm, Charm, I think is really sick here. Making the mana work in a deck that it does want to play basic mountains and in a deck that wants to uh, does want to play four Valakits in a triple green. Uh, <laughs> And play a triple green card is not super duper easy, but uh, Fire of the Thicket is really cool here, where it kind of bridges that gap, allows you to filter that red into double green, and also if you just happen to have Sunken Citadel plus two Fire of the Thickets, uh, you know these three lands combined can make four mana, which is uh, which is pretty interesting overlap. Obviously, you need two, but so sometimes I've actually even found myself. Um, Tutoring for Firelit Thicket, or, or or I'll just like draw two Firelit Thickets, and then I'll tutor for the Sunken Citadel. So you can kind of complete with Charm a little bit in that way. And so this this mana engine of like Citadel Castle Garenbrig, um, in combination with the two mana ramp pieces, uh, leads to a lot of turn four Titans. This stack is very consistent at like casting Primeval Titan on turn four. Which is not anything new, but what is kind of new about like the sequencing here, I think for... Um, for Titan Shift is when you're casting Primeval Titan on turn four historically, that usually involves like casting a ramp spell on turns two and three. Usually you'll cast, you know, Soccer Tribe Elder on turn two, Explore on turn three, then you get a turn four Primeval Titan. With this list, you can cast Far Seek or Explore on turn two, and then because it, you're it's you're so likely to either have Castle Garenbrig, Second Citadel, um, or like Archdruid's Charm for Castle Garenbrig. You can just spend that third term. Archdruid is charming. Either like set up your primal titan, casting dryad, casting one ring, casting removal spells, and you just have like a little less, a little less air in the deck, which I think is kind of interesting. You also occasionally can cast primeval titan on turn three. I don't think this is something that traditional valakit titan can ever do, uh, but if you just have, you have to have a hand that can go sunken citadel into either explore or far seek um, into Castle Gar and into play Castle Garenbrig on the next turn to cast a turn three Primeval Titan, which is going to be very good in some games. Uh, I also do want to talk a little bit about, like, why you would want to play this deck over Amulet Titan. I think that being able to have, like, lots of main deck red removal for Magus, being relatively immune to disenchants, you do have Dryads, but, like, just not being Force of Vigor, your Urza Saga, Force of Vigor on your Amulets is really nice. And you also kind of get to play that Force of Vigor game against Amulet Titan, I think is kind of interesting. We also have Bajuka Bog and Cavern of Souls as, like, alternative to Archdruid's Charm targets for when you need Graveyard Hate, when you need to, like, play around Counter Magic. Um, but let's get into it. What is for toughness? Yeah, we're, again, Flame Slash is better than Lightning Bolt in Modern for the most part at the moment. Side of Draco, Yogmoth, and Rhino tokens are all incredibly popular in Modern, and they all have for toughness. Also, uh, Territorial Kavu has for toughness on turn two a lot of the time. What did you end up taking a 75 stick? Yeah, I, I played uh, Blue White Control. Charm was really, really good in Timeless Lotus. It was like phenomenal there. I also like liked the card. In, in fact, I liked it in Devotion, but those archetypes aren't good. Yeah, I like the, I like the Valakid Assault list too. I want to circle back to that one some. Turn 
Turn one unlucky witness, oh yeah. Will I be cutting Renin 6 and Vakit Assault? I don't know. Probably not. Bowmaster? I'm gonna beat a Bowmaster. So I don't want to tap the ring now because they can kill their unlucky witness? I guess they could have already killed their unlucky witness. Their un extra Bowmaster is a bit better, I guess. A very unlucky witness indeed. I love this uh, red black sack archetype, so fun. The Steve said Seth nearly played Green Devotion and Pioneer for Pateur. I I don't blame him. I think that like Green Devotion with Archdrude's Charm is likely very good in Pioneer. I think the draft that we had was good. Um but hammering out the exec seventy five was a little bit unclear, as it often is. So I can't quite go dry it into charm for like another Valakit, but I do get to basically very close to winning the game actually, but go for a little, little board wipe. Feels like you're building tribute to the world tree. Could you write a 20 word argument for tribute to the world tree? I don't even know what that card does exactly. Think Goblin Grenade got my blast for possible and gleeful demolition shell. Of course, yeah. I've played those cards and alongside demolition before. This matchup was probably really good. I remember playing the sacrifice deck, always thinking these matchups were pretty good. 20 word argument, like. Okay, Tribute to World Seas seems to do nothing. I didn't play in the PT, I played the 75k. Made a deep run. Steez, 34 months, thank you, welcome back. But you are super dead next turn, you have nothing you can do. <laughs> Let's get this show on the road. I think I'm not, just gonna you know, not even tap the ring. In response. Charm is definitely looking, I think, better in this deck than the uh, Twiddle deck. I like Psychic Frog a lot. I think that card is just a good two drop that has, like, synergy, of course, with, like, Cauldron and Discard Outlet. It's just a good two drop. Okay, up a game against Rakdos Sacrifice. Mostly need to be concerned about some combination of Magus of the Moon, Blood Moon. On the draw against decks, I think can have Blood Moon. They, this is also like Goblin Bombardment. Let's like let's bring like three fours. Both is better than Slash overall. I don't know if I want to play six. Probably six is okay. Uh, Ring is also probably just not amazing. It was good that game. They're a Bowmaster deck, we're on the draw. I think just cutting the rings is probably okay. Can't bolt a turn on Ragavan. They might not be main decking Ragavan too. They are main decking a lucky witness, so. Yeah, 
Yeah, Charm is really good, I think. I, don't, I know this archetype isn't, like, the most exciting or whatever, but... Archery's Charm is really good. I think I'm gonna graveyard this one, though. I just really want lands. I do like that I can answer Magus or Blood Moon with this hand. Ticks who? Five, 15 months, they go come back. Hope you're doing well. Not a very lucky witness. I do love that card, though. You don't hate drawing Archer's Charm. But I just surveilled one to the yard. It was kind of close. Dual traits? Nice. <laughs> I mean, his term is really good, but you don't always want a 3-drop, you know. They reveal a Blood Moon and a Malak Rebirth here, so I'm going to go just yield to instep. Have my Force of Vigor at the ready. I don't know what I'm pitching. Probably the Dryad. <clears throat> Been in the Emrakul. I think I think the new Emrakul is incredibly good. Okay, can't quite. Titan here. Uh, you, you're gonna, we're gonna be building Eldrazi Temple Emrakul decks before we're building uh, Tron Emrakul decks, probably. I think, like, analyze the pollens slash traverse to, like, either find Emrakul or find uh, your discard outlet or find your temple is kind of interesting. But I, it just doesn't seem that tough to, like, on turn uh, to cast that card on turn four in that kind of shell with, uh, with a big degree of consistency. That's fine, we can, you know, Archer's Charm that later, Force of Vigor that later. What do you think of Tiny Bones? I, I didn't read it all the way, I think. And I all I know is it's a one mana one one with a lot of text. But six colors really? Well, it every yeah, six colors really. If you have Eldrazi Temple, one Eldrazi Temple it's like five, you have two it's like four. That card is fucking worth five mana, brother, I tell you what. <laughs> Felix, with the gifted sub, thank you, thank you, welcome back. Tiny Bones is not a Modern Horizons card too, right? It's like a different, different set. Outlaws, cool. Cool, cool, cool. Just surveil two here. Post board the five pack. Thank you so much. Good to see you, chat buddy. Hope you having a good start to your year. If you got a gift and stuff for post board. Make sure to thank them. Can't really put back the besage you for the out by moon, but I also don't need to. Um, Besage you it too aggressively. You're gonna need a couple more mountains. I guess I go district Valakit, and then I can go mountain, uh, mountain, mountain after that, and get two triggers. Oh well. Shucks. Can you get forced to play around Blood Moon? I guess. I like a Cassidy card in my hand. So now I'm drawing this dumb Beseju. Nexus of Becoming. Becoming D's. Um... You have a combat your turn, you may exile an artifact creature from your hand. If you do, create a token that's a copy of exile card, except it's a 3 3 golem. Uh, I think that card costs 6 fucking mana. You could trash or treasure it into play, and it's not going to be a very good plan. Like, if I'm going to spend 6 mana on a colorless card, I, I want it to be Emrakul, almost definitely. The new Emrakul. Yeah, Layla's a good card. I mean, I think you're mostly just putting Layla and Rhinos at first, uh, which is pretty boring, but certainly seems like the best place for Layla. I don't know what to tell you. Okay, 
Okay. Blocks pretty well here. Flame Slash looking awful. Yeah, I think this is Outlaws. I don't fucking know. Too many spoilers. I, I really I really don't like how they like why why who who is making the decision to spoil things from the new standard set that I don't even know the name of Outlaws of something, uh, Modern Horizons and Assassin's Creed in the same like ten minutes. Why are we doing this? Literally, why? It's, it's just confusing everybody. Assassin's Creed is not for a long ass time. Can we please wait? A and 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 Fallout and I don't know what Bloomborough is, but also Fallout. Yeah, also Fallout. Why is this all happening in the same ten minutes? Can we please space this out? Everyone's confused. Everyone is confused. Can we please just spread it out a little bit? I legitimately know no one who is not confused about this shit. Corporate greed, it's not... Corporate greed is not the answer to everything Hasbro does. I mean, it kind of is, but it's just dumb. <laughs> it's just dumb. I guess maybe. Maybe it is the answer. <laughs> what are people confused about? It's just, I don't know, it's just too much. Maybe confused isn't the right word. It's just information overload. Okay, so I got a turn here. I guess I'm going to try to load Sage you into turn. Or I'll channel before they can get this blood gas back, actually. But it's just a dumb, just dumb marketing, I think. How's it supposed to squeeze every ounce? Yeah, but if they want to squeeze it, right, spread that shit out. Spread it out. I, I, we'll all eat it up. Just spread it out over the course of, like, six months. <laughs> I don't know, or like longer than ten minutes. I... Even, even like le legitimately, like we have we have three days at the con. Can they can they just be? Can we get can we get Outlaws on one day, Fallout and Assassin's Creed on one day, Modern Horizons three on a day? Is that not just like super reasonable? I'm losing it. Okay, I'm gonna bring these rings back in and cut these slashes. Like, you know, when I say spread it out, I mean, like, over the course of a week is fine. <laughs> but in, like, when the tits, it's just too much. It's too much. Is Bloomborough still illegal? Yeah, I, I've never, I've, like, legit never heard of Bloomborough. I, I don't know what that is. Is, is. is that a standard legal set? Is it a crossover? Yeah, Assassin's Creed's modern. The set after Outlaws, okay. Thank you. I'll keep those on the plane. Try to surveil into two drop, maybe. Well, I can't really put uh, Castle Garenbrig away since that lets you cast a Titan on turn four. Oh, that's the one that was six mana bear. I, I thought that that was from Outlaws. It's too much. I don't see the issue with getting a few cards, various upcoming sets. I don't know. I just, to me, it seems like it's just way better to focus the hype on one, on like on one set at a time. And also, like when when you see like twenty new cards in the same like day, like the fact that they're from five different sets just makes it hard to remember. A heavy play uh, set. I've got a link in the the, the panel down below. You can use code Aspiring Spec for ten percent off. Then. Pretty good sleeves, pretty good deck boxes, pretty cool mats that are not really for me. It's okay, we can stop rambling about the same fucking things. Nice that we can cast this Blood Moon, I guess, if they do happen to moon me next, or we can cast the ring next if they do happen to moon me. They reveal two Mayhem Devils, which is awesome. They have a moon in their hand. They may be forgoing Mayhem Devil, though. Hmm. 
Right, I'm gonna get two Valakuts. Or do I get Forest Valakut? I'm gonna get two Valakuts. I think if they had Moon, they would have played it last turn, right? We're on Super Dead next turn. I can just get. I think Moon made this turn just get Forest off the Titan. Not that it helps me do much besides find my one of beside you. I've got three Force of Vigors to dig through also. If my opponent terminates my Titan, I guess we just pack for another one or pack for Dryad. Probably pack for Dryad and play Ring. I guess pack for Dryad just also wins the game by itself. They don't have two terminates. Opponent's in the tank. Yeah, Priest of Titania was mine. Yeah, we at least we have Priest of Titania. That's all we can really care about, huh? I mean, I just don't really care if they bolt. I don't think they're very likely to bolt either. I'm gonna block. I think, I think they like should not have the card lightning bolt in their deck post board, so... It feels kind of bluff attacky to me. But even if they have it, we don't really mind very much. Yeah, there's been a lot of suggestions for Gruel Turf. I, there's tension for sure. I'm, I'm not completely opposed to it, though. Okay, so this is four of the six damage. If, I guess if they can have, like, Goblin Bombardments to get the rest dealt. Okay, they have no mana left. Ah, uh, Evoke Grief. Evoke Grief for the six point of damage. Well played. Good turn. Just gonna mention real quick that even Priest of Titania won't make Modern Elves good. Thank you. I I know, I know better than most people. But um, what's nice about Modern Elves? It's just like when I've been playing it, we we've still been doing pretty well. But it's just like so painfully obvious that Priest of Titania would be so much better than Elvish Arch Druid. This has just been. It's like it's so much faster. It gets uh, it gets. To give get gets hasted by Tyvar, gets brought back by Tyvar. It's like much easier easier to cord for. Um, the untapping it with Corian Ranger is really sick, really fast, and it's it's like it's just a much it's it's like a big upgrade to the worst card in the Elvis deck, which is Elvis Arch Druid. Um, but it's the kind of it's kind of the kind of mana engine that you need. Yeah, Elvis has been good. I the for, the very first GP I ever played, I lost my win and into top eight against Elves. So Grixis Delver lost to Andrew Solano on Elves. Um, I, I think I think we could potentially play one Elvish Archstreet as a core target, but you, I, I, I would not. I, I would not. And then and then Tyvar becomes like a really good option again with with the with the Priest of Titanias. Um, just it just feels like everything comes together so cleanly. Elves just doesn't have the tools that gotta push his hell decks. I don't know. Like, we have not done bad with elves. <laughs> we have, okay, we have done bad with elves. But we've also done good with elves. <laughs> it, it it is a deck that I think has a lot of very powerful draws. Uh, yes, is weak to a lot of cards in, in in current modern, but I think has a lot of good tools and is also my pet deck. Can't a streamer have a pet deck? Yeah, I mean, there may be a zombie or two, four dogs. But this, this is also, like, when I stream with elves, it's like, it's like every loss, Chad is, like, piling on to how bad elves are, and, and every win, Chad is, like, I just always feel like wins count for half and losses count for double. When you play elves, because the losses just feel so bad, and the wins you just crush your opponents. I like I like Psychic Frog a lot. I think the card's good. Okay, so we're winning this matchup. I'm just gonna attack and win.
Turtle, happy four years. Welcome back. Gab also had his four year resub today. What would be the. You'd also cut the Voha and play 3 3, but I think the Voha is pretty good. Okay, keep a turn three ring. What's up? It's me, your friend, Aspiring Spike. You keep that, I think. Played your NT my deck inside events with minus one blood gas, plus one, minus one call, plus four daredevil, plus one amber. Felt better this way. Okay, sounds fun. Sounds fine. Yeah, I definitely don't mind amber. Nice to talk to you too, of course. Um, what are you doing here? I think I'm just gonna cast Dryad. I think this is a good counter spell bait. Yeah, I mean Leela may be a good card in Rhinos. I, I wouldn't overthink the the synergy too too much. Christmas movie? I think with the the 14 months. Welcome back. See you in 10 months for Christmas. Upkeep bolt me. So this means that they are likely looking for a land and don't have a counter spell in their hand. They kept a card on top, so I'm expecting to see a land hit the battlefield. They could have spell peers, but I think they just never have counter spell here if they're gonna upkeep the bolt. They also fucked up by not fetching for delirium. I draw another Valakid for turn. Oh, sorry. No, I fucked up by not playing the Valakid for turn. I'm gonna cast the ring. Uh, they, I'm not playing around Pierce, but uh, I, I think they don't have counter spell. Okay, they didn't Pierce. Bummer. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think Layla will be super good, but if she's good anywhere, it's probably Rhinos. And she's like, uh, she's not bad. Oh, they, oh, sorry, I thought they were going to have Delirium if they cracked the tar, and I was wrong. Oops. Yeah, I need to, re I need to read Tiny Bones. Okay, Tiny Bones, the pickpocket. This is an Outlaws of Thunder Junction card. One mana, one, one death touch. Deals combat damage to a player, may cast target non-land permanent from that player's graveyard, and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. Yeah, I don't know. Not, not a card I'm super excited for. Wait, you have another counter spell? Maybe they just found it. So this is mounted number five. So I need one more to trigger these Valakids. Kind of bad against anything but a bobble deck. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, I don't think it'll be a good modern card, I agree. And I'd say that even if the bones were bigger. I, I have not done a reenact the crime brew. A lot of people have played a reenact the crime in like a, a Gorio's Emerald Cookbook deck. I think that's kind of like the obvious place to play it. I think it's okay there. I didn't have like I thought it wasn't that interesting to just kind of play play that same exact seventy five. Basically, I, I didn't have like big updates to it. So I want to try to play a reenact the crime omniscience deck. I think. I think putting omniscience into play with that card is is pretty interesting to me, and um, 
I've tried a little bit to find a list that looks cohesive, and I, I at the moment I feel like I have failed to find a list that's like pretty good looking, but haven't completely given up. Okay, any mountain kills the shredder, which is nice. Any one ring is an incredible top deck. <laughs> kind of would have been a better top deck of the ring. I don't know. The new Oko looks good. Well, not that one. That's the old one. I think I think the new Oko sucks, but at least in the context of modern. Like, four mana Planeswalkers are just almost unplayable. Like, you can play Jace and Miracles and have it be fine. You can play Karn and decks with tons and tons of mana. But it's like... Four mana is just so much mana to spin on a Planeswalker. It's just so easy to kill them. Isn't it just slow Gorios? Well, the thing about Gorios is Gorios is so much better than everything else in, in Modern. It's it's incredible. It's like, it is much better than any other effect. So, like, Redundancy is good. But what's cool about Reenact the Crime is also that it can put Omniscience into play. And Omniscience is a good card to have in play. My opponents already used two of their four counter spells. I'll try to play around uh, a counter spell if we can. Seems like we can. Very lucky. So I have twelve damage off of off of these. Let me just see what my top card is. I guess. I'm graveyarding that. And then I will just deal three and then deal three to their face. Dude tells you he's a fan of nothing. I said good luck, have fun. They said I'm a fan, not super big. You want me to give a super big response? <laughs> Thank, thank you, Huge Owl. Their name is Huge Owl. They literally are. Their name is super huge. But a super huge owl, not a super huge fan. Shameful. I'll take nine damage for two mana. But I do only have two mountains left in the deck. Yeah, no, this is just a meme. For some reason, people always say big fan in the chat, and so people start saying I'm not a big fan as a reference to the chatters who say they are a big fan. I just am simply suffering from success too much. I don't know. But I do appreciate, you know, I do appreciate y'all. <laughs> It's also like a meme. Like, they could even be saying this because saying big fan is a meme because, like, when people have been doing that lately, they go, hey, big fan, and then they just kill me with the nuts, you know? It's just... There's just too many layers to unpack for me to really engage with this a ton. There's just too many layers. Okay, I'm going to trim a, a thicket. I, 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 end up, I think I want to cut a land for the cavern. I don't know what that land should be, because I think I want to keep all my mountains in, because I can't really go down more. I guess we're just going to cut a thicket and lose the uh, lose the likelihood of us to have Sun and Citadel double thicket, which are pretty good draws. Those draws are pretty good. Maybe I could trim a castle instead. I think trimming castle is fine, because it's kind of awkward with the Cavern of Souls plan. And then I also need to bring in... Uh, like three fourths of vigor on the draw, and then cut the far seeks. Uh, Endurance is a pretty good card against them. I, mean, I, I guess I'm going to keep get Ragavan to death pretty fast. Talked about Chip to Mulligan in too aggressively and too.
Why do we cut off for a seek rather than just trimming between them and corn? I tend to think Explore is the better card between the two in this deck, and it's kind of as simple as that in this matchup. Okay, Ragavan into Moon on the play. Yeah, you, usually when someone says in the chat that they're not a huge fan or they're a medium-sized fan, I think that they watch me way too much. <laughs> That's usually my first thought. Was Force better in case you draw second Force? I only have one Endurance in the deck. Oh, sorry, one Force, force in the deck. Maybe you should have two. The mana is just so tough. The man is really tough. Like we don't have fetch lands in the deck, so like the second forest is like you have to you do have to naturally draw both of them to like cast an endurance. Like how often is that gonna come up versus just wanting to have three basics against field decks? Yeah, you can't far seek for basic forest either. Got six cards in their hand. Tapping a red mana. Now they're untap. Okay, they're just casting Ragavan. Why would they cast and not dash? They definitely don't have Counterspell in their hand. They could have Spell Pierce. Of course, on this channel, opponents always have Spell Pierce. They put Unholy Heat into the graveyard. Then why don't you stream on another channel? Not sure what you're trying to banter with this. Why don't you stream on another channel? I can tell you're bantering, but I, don't, I, I just don't know what you're, trying to, what you're trying to say. 6-6 six, six, Murph died. Couldn't really endurance, kind of needed to, of course, save. The green cards to pitch the force here. Okay. There's the force. So we could play around, of course, Spell Pierce drawn for turn. But I think playing around another Blood Moon <coughs> is also kind of good. Oh, okay. Rude. So they keep a card on top. They would never keep They would never keep Spell Pierce on top here. So let's go ahead and not force. Would they keep another Blood Moon on top? Probably not. Probably not. Yeah, yeah, they, they would also not keep Blubber on top, but they would, they would never keep either, so. At the very least, we don't let them, like, cast another Murktide or something. So. Our Endurance would make their Murktide an 8-8, eight, eight, which is scary. They also kept a card on top, so it's like... <laughs> they have a relevant spell in their hand. Uh, I have to draw the ring, I guess. Titan doesn't even do it. Okay, I'm gonna concede. <laughs> Just concede to the misty rainforest crack. Thank you very much. Um, on the play, I think I want maybe less than three force of vigors. I think on the play, I'm gonna play uh, one less flame slash and just one far seek. Click the submit button. Yeah, endurance is an exile, but the Murktide is worded if when they leave the graveyard, not exiled from the yard. Oh, I see. They have the spell pierce of this channel, change channel, stream on another channel. I get it. I, I knew I knew this stuff I wasn't getting, as there way too often is. 
I think Layla will be busted modern. No, I think it'll probably be not very good, but it's cool. I think it, it could be somewhat playable. Okay, I like the sands. We have turn three Archdruid's charm up for like either Titan in hand or um maybe to kill a blood moon probably don't want to kill a blood moon we really want to dodge hopefully they, they don't play turn one ragamon all three games that would be like super nice um super nice we also have uh the ability to cast a one ring on turn three if we draw because we are lucky enough to have citadel double thicket that is very sad do me hope you feel better soon Would have been nice to see. You. I went to the dive down party. Would have been nice to see you there next time. Commercial district sounds so ungruel. You know what? Kind of right. <laughs> Pretty base take. So I've drawn Primeval Titan. So now I guess we're gonna hold up this this charm. With the intention of making an uncounterable Primeval Titan. If they fetch end of turn, do I charm in response? Or do I and just get blown out by Spell Pierce again? You did? Am I? I think so. So they let that resolve. So I'm going to put Cavern of Souls into play. I'm going to name Giants. Then we'll make four green. I was, what's cool about Archer's Charm is when you choose the first mode, they don't know if you're getting a land or a creature. So it's even better than if it was templated with actually five modes. It's kind of funny. Just don't give them that info. So they must have subtlety. Yeah. But I'm going to put this bad boy right back on top. They pitched a stern scolding. Is green charm just instant speed demonic tutor with upside? Well, I mean, it, sometimes it puts the damn thing into play, you know what I mean? And it also can kill kill things. Green charm is really good. Got yield till end of turn going on so that I can get a blood moon end of turn. I'm down to 17. They know I'm going to cast another pri uncomfortable Primeval Titan. Five cards in their hand. Yes, you can use the Citadel with two filter lands here, which is why we could cast a Primeval Titan last turn. I'm going to save the Castle Gear and bring in my hand to trigger the Dryad. They also don't ha currently have Delirium. But if they do go for an Unholy Heat on the Titan, we have Endurance. Which I guess I'm pitching Force of Vigor to. Because I think they would have cast a Blood Moon last turn, right? For sure. I said they just like couldn't use their mana on anything the last two turns. You think the Green Charm and Elves are just Cord? I don't think you play this in, in Elves, no. Nyxthos is just not good in Elves, is the problem. You, you need, you need like, a broken land to put into play. Like, like in the Timeless in the timeless Lotus deck, you have you have Lotus Field, and you have, um, you have the... I could have, Mike and Seth Gardens to copy Amulet. It, you have Urza Saga, in addition to... In addition to uh, lots of good payoffs to grab. 
in this deck you have Valakit, Slunken Citadel, Castle Garenbrig, sometimes Cavern, sometimes Filter. But it's like it's like it's like you really need it to be like a good ramp card that can also be an okay like ramp payoff and incidental removal is is the uh the magic formula in my opinion. So if they have two unholy heats, they get to live. You get you get to live. If I draw a lands, am I going to put my opponent to one? How valuable is that compared to killing the channeler? Not sure. Archdruid's Charm is a win. Valakid is a win. Primeval Titan is a win, I think. I think I have enough mana. Yeah, I should have enough mana. Um, the One Ring is probably not going to be beatable. They do have four cards in their hand still. Dr okay. Drew one of these, uh, I win cards. No fetch lands in this list. It's very hard to, like, have enough mountains to, like, kill without Dryad. Play Sunken Citadel, Valakit, uh, Firelit Thicket, which you need for your charms, I think, and they're also good with the, uh, the Citadels. Just can't do it all. Let's not play around Pact of Negation. Okay, I'm on the play, match number three. Glad we took some time to circle back to this today. <coughs> Hmm. Opponent with the uh, the upkeep stop here. Wonder what that's about. Oh, they also have a sixty four card deck. 64 card Seachrome Coast, Giver of Runes. Just too many good cards to play in Death and Taxes. Or Hammer, I guess. Upkeep Stop has not left the uh, the game yet. Just chillin' on my upkeep. Yeah, I, I know that. I, I saw the... the 68 card standard deck in action. It was awesome. Yeah, it could be Flump. Yeah, Flump does usually play more than 60. Opponent, can we please take this upkeep stop off? Didn't have dinner last night. Get hangry. Let's get a surveil. I think I'm going to do that instead of exploring. Yeah, gonna be a lot of read and chat. I think I'm graveyarding mountain. How are they taking this turn this fast? <laughs> And taxes is a bad matchup too. Oh, wait, or they—they they maybe they really maybe are flump combo. They would play all of these cards and play over sixty. Yeah, total didn't go that well. I thought I thought that Archdruid's Charm was not as good as uh, playing playing Simic Girl Chamber plus Karn, which we've, and Ancient Stirrings, which we've done in the past. 
think I think it was just kind of clearly not as good as that that build. Um, so we kind of moved on. Yeah, I, I like that build a lot more. Like the stirrings was like so much more consistency. Although I think I would play impulse over sleight of hand. That that's kind of like one difference I would make to that list. Um, not like that's a huge deal or anything. Archon's so good against my hand at the moment. I'm gonna cast the One Ring. Should've left up a red. Maybe you shouldn't have played Valakit, exposing it to the Ghost Quarter yet. I think it's kind of okay. I didn't play any showcase. I just played the 75k, and when I was done, it was like pretty late into, pretty late into Saturday, and then my flight was leaving like at four on Sunday. So on Sunday, I just went and did, I did architecture, architecture water boat tour with Jesse and Esther. It was really fun. Jesse was a really cool host. She showed she showed us the um, the bean and the tour. We went and got some deep dish pizza. It was a nice little morning. <coughs> what are you doing in response to this? Tide binder, okay, fair. So I cast Dried of the Elysian Grove. And then I'm going to kill the Archon, I think. With the hopes to explore into a, a land or a removal spell for the Tidebinder. And if I don't, it's not the end of the world either, of course. But I did. Was it being too free? It was actually the opposite of free. Because it, uh, it was behind a fence. We couldn't go like up, super up close. But Chicago is a very, very pretty city. It was nice to walk around, especially with someone who knew what they were talking about. What's been more fun, this or the Analyst Rage deck? Hmm. That deck's probably more fun. I, I really like Arch Druid's Charm a lot. I think I think that this is a very good Arch Druid's Charm deck. I think the Charm is very good in this archetype. Um, and so, like, that that's always exciting to me when I have a card I really like that I get to, like, play it in a deck like this, but... Nothing too crazy beyond that, I guess, either. Okay, so... Summoner's Pact is pretty bad against Archon of Ameria, I guess. Oh, they're thinking about Dryad versus Ring here? Really? Okay. So we're going to 15. I guess it makes sense. They don't mean just like play any land, kill, kill their stuff. Do I play the thicket? That's a question. So I'm going to Summer's Pact on their turn mate, for Dryad. Then I'm going to pay, tapping two Valakits, two Commercial Districts. And then I have... Yeah, I guess I want this to be in play pretty badly. Because it's like it's like two extra mana because I have Suck on Citadels. Yeah, only four mountains, but I can I can just pack for Dryad on their turn. Yeah, it comes in tapped if I need an next turn, so let's just play this turn. When at prime time, I drew prime time off explore, and I can only cast one spell turn because there's an archon of a Mary in play, which is why I'm gonna pact on their turn and pay four in uh in my upkeep probably. Dude, taxes players must get so much equity playing so slow. Your opponents are just all tilted. <laughs> Losing their minds. 
They ticked up this vial to four, and they're activating it. Uh, okay, let's see. Don't think I'm supposed to play this right now. Tinker, four months? You think Mardu Convoke would be an assumable deck choice for Arsene RC? It would be fine, yeah, I think. I think it would be okay. Okay, so they're replaying their Archon here. This is okay, because I can just kill both if I draw one land in my in, in, in any of, between my draw step and the ring draws. I do have a... 28 lands total in the deck, so somewhat likely, I think. If not, I guess also just Titan works. Okay, so we'll go Sunken Citadel. Oh, come on. Okay, so enough mana to go Dryad, Castle Garenbrig. Oh, wait, these. I need to go Stomping Ground first, fuck. I think it should be fine. So I'm gonna kill both of these, and then I can. I can go Archdruid's Charm for. Another Valakit, and then kill all their stuff. And then stomp and grab them for nine. We have 21 damage. Well, I can't, I have to kill the Archons before um, I play any other spells. Which means I don't have, which is minus six damage, which is less than their life total. I'm not gonna cast the explorer here either. Turn. <coughs> they still have two cards in their hand. Would Upkeep Charm have done it? Mm, I don't know. I don't think so. Land, land, Upkeep Valico is 21. Susceptible Vile. Yeah, they have Vile. The Ghost Quarter doesn't break it up, I think. I think Ghost Quarter is positive damage for me. Did miss the Upkeep line. I think I think we're okay. Good to, good to point out the line though. Yeah, they, they're, there just wasn't enough room to fit everything in, so they had to play 64 cards, Sarah Paragon. Will my opponent make me click through all these triggers, or will they concede? They concede? Awesome. So up a game against Death and Taxes. Let's go. Second bolt in, three explosives in. Let's probably not play Curse Totem. Let's I don't think I don't think we're gonna play Force of Vigor either. Cut these summoner packs. Yeah, I'm, I I I think I'm I'm down for a Magic Online restart too.
Yeah, it kind of said opponent had just like so many really relevant eight pieces. It just like wasn't that close of a game. Okay, on the draw. Oh yeah, we do. We should add cloak to the uh, word scene and smoke image, huh? Pretty good. Yeah, the, the background picture is a popular boss from Dark Souls, Ornstein and Snow, and they they just, they use a hammer and a spear. One of the, one of them uses a hammer, one of them uses a spear. So I I MS painted Colossus hammer and Shadow spear over their original weapons. It's been the background for like three years now, two two years at least. A while. Volatile fault. Cold your complete. I feel like I'm being tricked into killing the stone forge, it doesn't matter very much. <laughs> Okay. Basically always bolting, I think. Uh, I think because they can kill my Valka kind of easy, I'll just graveyard that. Keep a bolt on top. Sure hope they don't play Sarah Paragon. Do you bolt in their turn to cast exploring turn? Well, they have blue mana, so like, what if they have like a uh, protection spell, you know? <laughs> okay, so we're shuffling that bolt away. I think we'll get. I guess you mountain. Any chance in a million that the Vayner project the one the PT may come to some form of modern? Yeah, there's there's a chance. I, I don't I don't think that the that plan will be particularly good. Oh right, sorry, I forgot the stupid interest tap clause. So I should have played Valakit instead. Yeah, I, I don't think it'll be particularly good, but I think it'll be. Ah, I don't know. It's we can try it. Yeah, you can pay ward with Solitude. A lot of decks get to ignore it. Solitude's not that popular of a card, too. We have Vein Rippers really it's like it's it's kinda nice that it's like the most powerful vampire you can put into play while simultaneously being um more castable than a lot of the other ones. Dingo just did Vayne Ripper and Scam, awesome. Very cool. Yeah, it does seem very good against Yogg. I'll, I'll, I'll put some thought into it. Keep that on top. Your turn. I only played one league with the Cauldron Goblins deck. I thought it was I thought it looked, looked really sweet and kind of powerful. I need to I need to chew on it some more. Fail to find. Fail to find. What the hell? You have sixty four cards in your deck. <laughs> They're all all your equipments are in your hand. Uh, 
I I I made a deep run, but I died in like the penultimate round for top eight. And the round before that, I lost to Jarvis, who did top eight. Okay, we defeated Taxes. Hope you're doing well today. Somewhere in the spectrum of good and bad, at least. Yeah, I played blue white control. Deck looked pretty good. I think it is pretty good in standard, and uh, I would play it again. I, I maybe would make some changes. Jesse convinced me to play a bunch of Jaces in the main for the mirror and domain. I, th I think it was very good at doing that, but it wasn't like it's pretty bad to draw most of the time. How many players? I think it was five, like five twenty somewhere somewhere in that ballpark. A little bit smaller than I expected it to be. I expected it to be like seven eight hundred. Opponent suspends a second copy of Crashing Footfalls, plays a Flooded Strand. Usually like to far seek on turn two instead of uh, explore. Yeah, yeah, like it was like way better EV than any RC, so if you can make it to like these like these magic con ptqs they are they're a pretty good way to try to try to spike and get on the pro tour one tournament you're in uh the problem is there's only like <laughs> three or four of these a year don't think i'm going to amsterdam just to play in one although we may be itching i don't know Maybe a chance that the, this is there because it was standard. Like there's a chance that it just makes it smaller than it would have been otherwise. Yeah, I, I've always wanted to go to Amsterdam, but it's not that I don't want to go. It's that you know this is just too expensive a of a trip probably for a PTQ. Of course, I'd love to visit. Just wish they'd give us GPs back. Yeah, of course. <sighs> of course. Yeah, like 520 in the standard event. Yeah, and, and I played Blue White Control. Got a lot of help from Jesse. She, she gave me like a really good write-up on what the heck was going on in standard. Talked to Mason a little bit too. Talked to Doomwake. Talk to someone else. What did it, was it Jarvis? I don't think I talked to Jarvis about it. I Maybe mean, it was Amaz. I don't know. I talked to some people about it. But I feel like J Jesse gave me like a really, really good write-up. The hut was very clear, concise. Picture what's going on, I felt. Any sponsors I could ask about that? None of my sponsors. <laughs> I don't know, maybe I, could, maybe I could do a panel. Like if I do a panel at Amsterdam, maybe they'll pay for my flight or something. Okay, um, we're probably going to lose this game. What's my path to victory? I don't know, it's not topping this Primeval Titan, though. Modern panel. Yeah, I guess I'll I guess I'll email somebody or ask Honorog who I can email and ask if I to see if they can get me over there or something. It's probably a good plan. Get to play modern PTQs, visit Amsterdam. The thing is also like Esther won't let me to go to Amsterdam. Sure, she'll let me go, but she like she'll definitely want to go too. So we'd have to pay for her flight, which should be we could do it probably. But the F Esther's FOMO would be un unimaginable. I think, like, the ring, maybe. Yeah, okay, let's go to game two. Yeah, I know it's the Modern Horizons 3PT. Like, I'll try to... I'll try to qualify if, qualify for the Pro Tour via the RC. I'll... I, I was thinking about this morning, like, I will... I'll tr I'll try to play some RCQs. Oh, I forgot to like look at their their build. Hold on, I can still look. Yeah, so yeah, obviously Scion means they're Rainbow Rhinos. So I'm gonna not play around Blood Moon. Just kind of a couple of slashes for like Rhino slash Magus. Oh, I have a whole box of shirts. 
you admire. I've been wearing some on, I'm wearing on stream sometimes from Heavy Play. They definitely they definitely treat me right. Very nice. Can you explain why you went Titan instead of Charm or Slash? Well, Titan was the highest impact play. It was bad against their two cards in hand being a subtlety blue card. Blocked the Rhinos really well, set up to like win the game next turn. I, I feel like it was kind of a clear spot for it. I'm gonna keep this. If we draw any any untapped land or tap land next turn, we can um, cavern into or castle garen break into into Titan. <laughs> yeah, have you play plane ticket? <laughs> I guess there's like draw castle and then like play dryad and get Valakit plus Titan going online. I'll figure. I, I I promise. I promise to try to go to Amsterdam. But I not not gonna commit to actually being able to go. So I'm actually gonna play Stomping Ground here because if my opponent has Ice next turn, I want to be able to I want to be able to make sure I can cast this this turn. Couldn't you do a thicket? Oh, sorry. Yeah, I forgot. I forgot to have a thicket. Should have played the Valakit then. Although this may end up working out better because, or it'll be the same. But I... save two lives sometimes. I guess it doesn't actually ever matter there. Kind of a fun line. The fact that this is instant is such a big deal. Miss M, what's the place you can visit Europe, Berlin, rest of Germany, France? Oh, I need to ask Dino <laughs> if I'm in Germany, if he'll hang out with me. <laughs> if Dino if Dino hangs out with me while I'm in Germany, I'm going to go for sure. <laughs> I'll go to Amsterdam for sure if I can have lunch with Dino one day. <laughs> that would be all it takes. Come visit SUK. I did. I did last year. I even did. I went to an LGS and met people. It was crazy. Well, that subtlety card's pretty good against us, huh? I think we'll see three new Arch Charms in Mage 3. I don't think we'll see the rest of the cycle. I'd be surprised. I've always seen one. One's probably a safe bet. I'm sorry, in Germany. Yeah, I'm in the area, you know. Sorry. <laughs> It's very close, though. Right? I bet it's a three-hour drive to Germany. Well, I don't actually know how close it is. The Netherlands. Yeah, it's just like... I guess although to like Berlin is probably a little bit longer. Yeah, as a Texan, I've been three hours super close. Two hour boat ride. Ah, oh, sounds so nice. I'll try. I promise I'll try, y'all. Did you the ring? Yeah, I'm not actually sure what city Dino's in. Dead, dead, dead. Pitch cards. Okay, and I know I know we're about to play for four one. I am very hungry. I did not eat dinner last night. Traveling back from Chicago to Dallas. So I'm gonna go pay out the doubters and go eat some lunch. Feels like a feels like a good stopping point, despite, you know, we have one more match to play. This didn't necessarily want to play four more when I started this league. Uh I think I'm gonna raid Dingo today.